Is this on? Yeah? Great. Hi, how are you? I'm Michael. Just a little heads up. I've been teaching acting at LA Opera for uh, a, a, a few years. And uh, I got into it as a fluke. I'm an actor. And it always bothers me when I go look at opera. And I'm like, it's so, oh, what's wrong with the acting? And so um, I just want to give you a little brief example. Okay? I just want to, uh, yes? Il questo vento a ribenti c'è il levanto, a serrenti vento, filenti sata. Now, I have a question. What language do you think I'm singing in right now? Anybody? Italian, Italian you're right. OK, anyone disagree? Italian? Yeah. It's actually nonsense. It's gibberish. I was just talking absolute <laughs> nonsense. And unfortunately, that is what most of us hear when we go to the opera, is total gibberish. It's nonsense. And the problem is that it's not you, it's them. <laughs> Nobody knows what they're saying in the opera. Can you believe that? It is absolutely shocking. And so the question is like, how did this come about? For 400 years, people have been doing this left and right, and nobody knows what they're saying. It's a sad state of affairs. You go to the opera, millions of dollars put into the sets, things moving up and down like this all around. Millions of dollars put into the costumes, all this stuff. Millions of dollars put into the lights. Millions of dollars put into the orchestra, the people who have trained their entire lives to be the best at what they do. Millions of dollars to the singers, people who train for their entire lives to make really specific sounds, yet it is boring. I would like just to raise your hand. How many of you have been to an opera? Just raise your hand. Holy cow, that's a lot. Okay, now raise your hands. How many of you, if you're gonna, really going to be honest, how many of you think that what you saw was boring at one point? Oh, okay, yeah, I would say about 50%. All right, so I think 50%, it is totally not fair if you're paying 200 bucks for a ticket. It should be 100% full-on engagement. So that's what I try to help singers with. It's very important to me. So the question is, why? Why is it boring for 50%? And I bet you there's the other 50%. There's some of you going, yeah, that's, I fell asleep that one time. I, guarantee, I, I have a strong feeling. So the question is, why? And here's the simple reason. Nobody knows the story. You can put tens of million dollars into anything, just look at any Jerry Bruckheimer film, but if you don't know the story, it will be boring and no one will connect. The story is the reason. I guarantee you, Mozart did not wake up one morning and go, you know, today I'm going to write the match of Figaro. No, somebody came to him and said, Mozart, I have a great little story for you, you're gonna love it. He's like, this is a great story. I'm gonna put music to this. And that's where it starts with the story. So that's where we start working with the singers is looking at the story. So now you might ask, oh crap. But I don't understand. They have in the program the synopsis, they have the super titles, and yet I still don't know what's happening? Yeah, that's a problem. So what are the elements of story? The elements of story are simple. Words, verbs, nouns, adjectives, pronouns, alliteration, ooh, assonance. We start to get poetic. Oh, very exciting, right? So what we're going to do now, we're going to explore just a little bit these elements of story, and we're going to see it in action, how to embody it, how to make it real and vivid and in the moment. Have you ever read the Bible? When you know someone, you don't abstractly know them, you know them. And that's what we're going to do right now. We are going to know words. We're going to know the story. So I'm just going to give you a little example right here. Just first is, here's an example of a sentence. I will go to the store, comma, and then I will buy some milk. So I'm going to show you, we have to embody this. We have to put motion into this. There is motion in emotion. If there is no motion, there is no emotion. Emotion is movement. I was moved when I saw that painting. I was moved when I listened to that music. You must have movement. So this simple exercise, I'm going to walk and say the sentence, and then I'm going to change direction when I hit the verb. All right? And the active verb, the transitive verb, where something is happening, the action. So. I am walking to the store, and I will buy milk. All right? That's it. I am walking to the store, and I will buy milk. So what's happening? Walking and buying. That's your story. OK, very good. Now I'm going to turn on the punctuation, because the punctuation is another thing that writers have as a way to express story. I was walking to the store and I will buy milk. How fascinating. Suddenly, I have a different thought. Two different thoughts. It could have been, I am walking to the store, 
and I will steal milk. Yes, <laughs> different thoughts. So we now see that punctuation or a comma can actually connect two different thoughts. It's a new thought. Now we do the whole sentence combining it. I am walking to the store and I will buy milk. I did the whole thing as one sentence, but containing those different elements. So now what we're going to do, holy crap, it's a score. I can't look at all that material there and oh, stop. So let's forget it. We're not going to look at the score now because there's too much information. You've got words, you've got dots and notes. Forget it. Ah, let's just look at the text. So much easier. There's just words. It's still going to be a lot, but not to worry. I'm going to invite Alex out here, who's an incredible singer, and Tali, who's our accompanist. And we're going to now explore this exercise, oh my god, in Italian. Holy cow. But the first thing, I want everyone here to read in English these little things. Look at this laser. This is cool. Holy crap. Laser tag anyone? That's what I say. All right. So here we go. Together on three, I want us all to read just the English. Ready? Sorry, three. One, two, three. Not know anymore what I am, what I am doing. Now a fire, now I am a vice. Every woman change of color, every woman ma me makes palpitate. What do you think's going on here? Just spit it out. What? What? Love. love. All right, love. Okay, so we have one for love. Anything else? Last. Last. Ew. Too slight everything. Oh. Okay, so now we're going to do the Italian. So now Alex is going to walk and turn on the verb. So here we go. Non so più cosa sono, cosa faccio, or di poco ora sono di ghiaccio. Ogni donna cambiar di colore, ogni donna mi fa palpitar. Okay, now we're going to do it again and she's going to turn on each punctuation point. Ready? Go! Non so più cosa sono, cosa faccio. Or di fuoco, ora sono di ghiaccio. Ogni donna cambiar di colore, ogni donna mi fa palpita. All right. To all these different thoughts happening, right? Look how many thoughts are happening in this one sentence. Holy cow, that's a lot of changing of direction of what you're thinking about. Now, she's going to do the one sentence. This whole thing is just one sentence but with all these different thoughts in it. Ready, steady, go! All right, that's the whole sentence. Now we're going to add one more thing to this, which is she's going to turn at the end of every verse line. And just listen to hear what you, what do you hear when she turns on every verse line? Ready, steady, go! All right, anyone hear anything? Well, I heard the rhyme. Oh, faccio, gaccio, right? All these. So this is because we become more aware of the verse, the structure of how it's put together by turning at the end of every verse line. All right, so now what we're going to do is, holy cow, oh my god, oh, wow. So that is the entire Italian. Now we're going to look at the accompaniment, the music. So the first thing here is, oh, what do we notice right here? What do we call it? Someone say that out loud for me. Vivace. What do you think that means, vivace? Lively. How do you know that? Viva Las Vegas. That's right. <laughs> it's alive. All right. Allegro. What does allegro mean? Happy. Uh, light. Okay. Well, I don't know what you do. For, all right. But all right. She's like allegro, please. I'm feeling good. Um, so, uh, right. Allegro. Light. Quickly. So, lively and quickly. Not boring and dead. Lively and quickly. And we also, what was that thing you mentioned about when we write in English what we think it's about? Lust. Oh my God, lust or love. So what are we getting so far about what we're putting together here? Wonderful. What? <laughs> what? Happy, lively, lust maybe. Okay, I love it. <laughs> Sounds like a plan. All right, so now what we're going to do here is let's just hear the accompaniment, just the bass line. Let's hear what the music is like. Now that we've heard the Italian, we've heard the English, now it's an opera, so we've got to hear the music that goes along with it. So let's listen. I want everybody to go like this. What does this remind you of? Heartbeat. Heartbeat. Holy cow! <laughs> yeah, keep going, keep going, keep going. Oh my God! Palpitating! 
Look at that, it's even written in there! What the fuck is he doing? Oh my god! Look at that, it's in the music, the heartbeat! Daka 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 It's a palpitation! Incredible. Now the question is, you can have good palpitations or bad palpitations. So the question is, is this a good palpitation or a bad one? What do you think? We got confused. Okay, wait, let's hear what key is this in? Let's hear the key. Uh, yes, now let's hear the other, let's hear a minor version of that. Okay, so play the accompaniment major as we normally hear it. Okay, this is how it is. Okay, now let's hear the minor version. Ooh, so it's major, all right. Oh no, I'm sorry, you need a coronary. Yeah, so it's not, um, all right. So we know that this is a kind of a positive event. All right, so let's hear this one more time. Yes, accompaniment, and now we're gonna put everything together. So we've got the verbs, we've got the punctuation, we've got the whole sentences, we've got the verse, and we have the rhythm of the accompaniment, which is the palpitation of the heartbeat, and then we have the singer. Let's do a happy dance, because that's what it's about. So you put all these things together, and suddenly you have a very layered performance. Thoughts are constantly changing. The emotion is constantly being felt. You're moving constantly. It's not a static event, but it's a constantly moving, shifting story. What does that remind you of? Oh, life! Yeah! Constantly changing, alive! Opera has the potential to be one of the most extraordinary 
life-altering, transformative experiences. But because we don't often take the time, these skills of simply paying attention to the story, the story is revealed in the moment. It's not she walks into the room, they fall in love, they get divorced. The story is revealed in each change of thought and how we each interpret and see that thought as the audience, us being with that person in the moment. So as you go out tonight, I want you to not take for granted any text that you look at, anything that you hear. There's a billion things going on underneath it, and it takes concentration, exactly what Ajur was saying earlier, to actually be human, listen, watch, pay attention, investigate, be sensitive to the myriad changes that are going on in something that looks very static and simple. So I just encourage you to stop and smell the dandelions. Thank you so much. Yeah, for your pleasure.